Dear New York Times, I love you. I do. I genuinely appreciate what you do. You are one of the institutions that I have faith in that gives me hope that we'll find our way through this sea of misinformation and fake news. I mean, I pay for your content. You're on my home screen. I love The Daily with uh, with Michael Barbaro and those guys. It's, I listen to it. I consume your content probably more consistently than anyone else's. So it was an absolute shock and frustration and pain to me when I saw the article posted by Ivan Penn on June 22nd of 2019 that was arguing electric vehicles are not ready for the mainstream because of this one use case and this one trip he went on that was just complete bullshit. Let me explain. Your journalist went on a trip from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, and I agree that's a common trip people do. It is around four and a half hours of driving, depending on how fast you go. And he did it with a representative from EVGO, somebody that makes an electric vehicle charging network. Now, the trip, the title was eight hours driving and over five hours charging. That is a long trip and one that would certainly deter most people. But the problem I have, and it's not with the reporter or the credibility or any of that. I think he did you know, a good job, as I would expect from anyone that is employed by the New York Times. The problem was in the setup and the situation that he was testing this in and then somehow extrapolating that onto the mainstream. Because long distance road trips certainly are an Achilles heel for electric vehicles today. And a few years back, that was not even an option. But the situation that he chose, the, the vehicle and the charging network, were also the worst ones, almost the worst ones you could possibly choose. Instead of choosing the more popular ones that actually exist in a market on a trip, like instead of trying to find the truth of what this one use case, which doesn't even represent normal daily life, Instead of finding that, you chose an absolute worst case scenario and then use that as your example. And being someone that is an advocate for electric vehicles, I did this exact same trip to show you exactly what that trip would be like in a 2018 Tesla Model 3 long range rear wheel drive, one of the most common ones that they have sold. So on my trip, I went from Hawthorne, California, which is right near LAX, all the way to the center of the Las Vegas Strip at the Link Hotel. Along the way, I stopped in Baker, California, the same place your reporter did, and I used the bathroom, grabbed a snack, and charged at the supercharging station there, just near the world's largest thermometer. I didn't take any additional time other than grabbing a snack and going to the bathroom. I was ready to go. I had plenty of charge to continue my journey and make it all the way to my destination. After arriving in Vegas, I had lots of range left because I stopped in Baker for those 10 minutes to charge, but the hotel I was staying at also had a charger for me to use. The next morning, I left around 8 a.m. and headed back to Hawthorne. This time, my car actually had a bit more energy than from before because it kind of rebalanced the battery pack. You know, you're not supposed to charge to 100% all the time, but after you do that, it actually adjusts to have the correct range reading. So it was more this time than it had before. Now on the way back, I was deciding to try and push it and see if I could actually make it all the way back to where I started in Hawthorne without having to stop and charge at all. Now I did stop in Yermo, California, and there is a supercharger there, but I did not charge. I stopped, I used the bathroom, grabbed a coffee, and I was on my way. It was about 10 minutes, give or take. So very similar to my stop on the way there. In the mountain range between Yermo and Hawthorne, I got a little nervous as my car was reporting less range, fewer miles that I could actually travel than I had to go, meaning I wasn't going to make it. However, I knew better because as I descended from the mountain range, my self-charging electric vehicle 
added range back to the battery pack. And when I was done with the mountain range headed on, I had plenty of miles left in the tank in order to get to my destination. So I arrived back in Hawthorne where I started with almost 20 miles of range to go. While there, I grabbed lunch at a nearby restaurant. This again was another of the Tesla V3 superchargers. In fact, it was the very first one that they ever unveiled. So the rate of charge was abnormally high, but it is a reality. This isn't some test example. This is a real world case that many people in LA could do if they so chose. So as you saw, the trip to LA and Vegas and back, I spent about nine hours driving four and a half each way and I charged once for 10 minutes. Not at all like the results that your reporter got in his trip. But there are a few things here I do wanna just make clear that I feel were, were wrong or incorrect in your reporting. The first one is you state most electric cars need to be plugged in after they've traveled 200 to 250 miles. Well, in Q1 of 2019, Tesla's sales represented over 75% of all electric vehicles in the United States. Tesla sells three models with ranges of 310, 325, and 370 miles, giving them an average of 335 miles. So unless you have a different definition of the word most, I would say that most EVs can go for about 300 miles before needing to be plugged in. That would give you that 10% buffer down at the bottom. And that's essentially what I did. It wasn't even 300 miles in my test. In your piece, you also wrote that chargers are often missing in places where people need them. However, on this trip, I passed five supercharging stations, and in LA, there are dozens more plus hundreds of destination charging stops. These are just the Tesla options. Teslas can also use regular EV chargers in addition to their own network, making this number even larger. In this region of the world where your test was done and that statement was made, chargers are bountiful. They are everywhere. So to say that they don't exist in these places is just a complete misnomer, it's just wrong. Now your reporter took a Chevy Bolt and Chevy represented about 10% of the EV sales in Q1 of 2019 here in the United States. So you could argue it's kind of a strange choice, right? Kind of a, a niche, a, a, a rare option, not definitely the mainstream one that is selling like crazy Teslas. So that was an interesting choice, but part of that led to a statement you made saying that Bolts, as for other electric vehicles, Experts generally recommend keeping the battery between 30 and 80% charge for optimal battery life. And there's something you should understand about this, that not all battery packs in electric vehicles are made the same. Tesla makes their own. They actually designed how this whole thing works. That is probably their most valuable asset is how to make a battery pack in an electric car and all the amazing benefits that that affords you. So in a Tesla, you do not need to keep it between 30 and 80%. This is why the data that we see shows that these things should last well over 500,000 miles before dropping below a 70% degradation mark. That means that your Nissan Leafs and your Chevy Bolts of the world aren't the same thing. So when an expert says 30 to 80%, that is not the case for Teslas. And Elon Musk has also confirmed this recently talking about the driving habits and that every so often you want to discharge it all the way down and charge it all the way back up. So if you wanted to keep within that range that is safe for a Tesla, you still could do this trip without having to even stop. And the last point I wanna make is that in your article, you claim that charging on average costs $10 for about 200 miles, depending on the car, or about half the typical cost of gasoline for that distance, according to AAA. Our experience was not as economical. We spent about $67 on electricity, perhaps $10 less than we might have on gas. This is madness. This is absolute crazy talk. A lot of Tesla owners buy their cars with a referral, and that referral gives them a thousand miles. Now it's varied, sometimes it was 5,000, et cetera, but there are also other benefits where a lot of the older cars get free unlimited supercharging for life. In fact, that's even a current deal as I, you know, as of recording this. And so the cost associated with a trip like this would be nowhere near $67. And I believe Chevy Bolt owners also get two free years of charging at EVGO. So I have no idea how you paid $67 for charging, considering you were going with an EVGO rep. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. Now, 
I, as you may have guessed, am a person that has racked up a bunch of referrals and through that have plenty of miles of free supercharging that I could use. So I didn't pay for any of the charging here, but typically I wouldn't pay for destination charging at all. And when I leave my trip, I would have paid for whatever my rate was at my house. So the the cost, the, the incremental cost here would have been that one stop I did in Baker where I actually pulled 24 kilowatt hours of energy and at the 28 cents per kilowatt rate, that is currently the price in California, I would have spent $6.72 had I needed to pay for it. So $67 is, is astronomical. I have no idea what's going on there, but something about that statement or that situation is just completely false and completely wrong. So look, when it comes down to it, I know you're a large organization. No one from the New York Times probably will even watch this or care, but I wanted to do this video for anyone that saw that article and felt like that represented the truth. Because as I've kind of shown here in my actual testing of doing it in a, in a popular EV, a modern EV, not a niche one that is not gonna travel as far on a niche network that isn't gonna support you as well, that's just not the case. So, so what was described in that article is not reality for the majority of people. And that's why I wanted to do this video for anyone that wondered about that and had questions on it. Now, there's probably some stuff I missed and I do not need to ask you guys to remind me of those things down in the comments because I, like the New York Times, you know, we, we make mistakes from time to time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below. And don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back here in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I hope you got something out of it. If you wanna dive deeper and actually see a, a raw vlog from my whole trip of all the different things and sites and everything that happened, go check me out on patreon.com slash teslanomics, join the community and engage with everyone else there. Hope to see you soon.